Rûri enfusina ve min seyyiyyâti a'mâlina. Men yahdihillâhu felâ mudillâlâ ve men yudlil felâ hâdiyelâ. Ve eşhedü en lâ ilâhe illallâ vahdehu lâ şerîkelâ. Ve eşhedü enne Muhammeden abduhu ve resûlü. Indeed, O praise and glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him. We seek His aid and His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils inside of His and from our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, none can guide. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is one and he has no partners. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger to the whole of mankind. My respected brothers and sisters in Islam, the most important relationship that we have is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we exemplify this through our prayer, our fasting, our hajj, our acts of ibadah. But what is also very important is our relationship with each other. How do you deal with your parents? How do you deal with your wife, your children, non-Muslim colleagues? Your character, your behavior is so important. And we all focus on the first relationship which we must which is direct acts of ibadah, but sometimes we don't worry so much about our character, our ikhlaq. And in the khutbah today, I want to remind ourselves about the importance of our behavior, our dealings with each other, and our character. And let's explain, things are best explained through an ayah of Quran or hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So he explains the importance of good character very beautifully in a hadith which is called the hadith of the muflis, or the hadith of the bankrupt. So he says to his noble companions, do you know who is bankrupt? So think, he asked this to his companions, if somebody asks you who is bankrupt, you know what you're going to say. So they, he asked the Sahaba, do you know who is bankrupt? And they said yes, the one who is bankrupt is the one without any money or goods. He's bankrupt. Maybe you and I would say the same thing. The Prophet وسلم, said no. Verily, the bankrupt of my nation are those that come on Yomul Qiyama with prayer, with fasting and charities. This is important. The Sahaba said bankrupt is what this dunya and no money. Rasul says no, it's the Akhirah that matters. It's Yomul Qiyama. That's the event. The event is not this dunya. You're worried about bankrupt. You don't worry about bankrupt in this dunya. The real bankrupt is the one who comes on Yomul Qiyama. And the deeds are good deeds or bad deeds. And this person has got the deeds because he's got prayer, he's got fasting, he's got charity. That first relationship, he did all of that. In the direct acts of ibadah with Allah, he did that. He did the prayer, he did the fasting, he did the charity. But he comes with insults, with slander, with consuming wealth, with shedding the blood and beating others. Terrible character. He shed the blood. He slandered or swore. He abused. So this bad character it comes with this. The oppressed will be given from his good deeds. If his good deeds run out before justice is fulfilled, their sins will be cast upon him and he'll be thrown into Jahannam. Subhanallah. He's ended up in Jahannam, yet he came with prayer, with fasting and sadaqah. What made him go there? His ikhlaq with others. If the person here had done evil to all of you, all of my good deeds go to you because I oppressed you in the dunya. I swore, I said something bad to my parents. I was abusive to my wife. I've done a wrong. That wrong has to be righted sometime. It is your mulkiyama. And the only way you can pay for it is your good deeds. So you give, you give, you've got nothing left to give now. Still, that one at the back, I still insulted them with my character. Now they're evil comes to me or the person oppressed and they end up in Jahannam. Why? Because of their character. This is the importance of God. Sometimes we neglect this, but character is so, so important. If you were to ask a Muslim, what is the most important aspects of Islam? Of course, he will, she will say that the five pillars of Islam. It's the most important, and it is the most important. But look behind every pillar of Islam and you will see the importance of good character. Every pillar of Islam is, is predicated, is reinforced by good character. Look at the Shahada, belief in Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, none of you becomes a true believer until he likes for his brother 
what he likes for himself. This is true. This is true Iman. What do I want for myself? If I've got a problem, I haven't got money, I want someone to give me money. That's what I want for myself. Then I should want the same for you. If you haven't got money, I should give you money. Because that what I want for myself, I want for you. This is true Iman. So the Prophet says, and the true Iman is the one, he desires for his brother, what he desires for himself. This is the, the premise of customer care. Anybody who goes to work in a company and you have to deal with customers, you must go on a customer care course. And the golden rule of customer care is what? You treat the customer as you wish to be treated yourself. This is the golden rule of customer care. Treat the customer as you want to be treated. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ 1400 years ago. Treat your brother as you wish to be treated. This is, this, is, this is our character, this is our Iman. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said three times, by Allah, he is not a believer. Three, this is emphasis, three times. Who is it? He was asked, who is that Ya Rasulullah? He said, one whose neighbor does not feel safe from his evil. So your neighbor is not safe from your evil. You don't have true Iman, the Prophet three times, he doesn't believe, he doesn't believe, he doesn't believe. You're making noise and disturbing your elderly neighbor. TV is loud and something and the walls are thin, you're disturbed, she can't go to bed at night because you're making noise. You're parking your car against their drive, you're disturbing your neighbor. And worse is when you disturb the neighbor of the masjid. But you're parking your car wrong, you're throwing stuff over into their garden because you just know they're not looking and whatever waste, you're harming your neighbor. Three times Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said he does not have true Iman, the one whose neighbor is not free safe from his harms. This is Iman, this is your character linked to Iman. Look at Salah. When we talk about Salah, we say, yes, I'm going to go, I'm going to recite this and Tajweed. And of course, it's so important. Look at the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu He said, I stand in prayer and I would like to make it long. But I hear the crying of a child and I shorten my prayer, not wanting to make things difficult for his mother. Look how caring Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. Sahaba are around. maybe Abu Bakr is there, Umar is there. Maybe Quran has just been revealed and he's going to recite that Quran. But he hears a baby crying. So he's worried, he's concerned, his character is so beautiful. I don't want to disturb the mother of that child. I'm going to shorten my prayer and so not to cause her inconvenience. This is character. This is ikhlaq, even in the salah. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, If any one of you wishes to lead a prayer, he should shorten it, because amongst them are the weak, the sick and the old. And if anyone amongst you prays alone, he may prolong as much as he wishes. So it doesn't mean you recite the shortest surah, but equally, you don't recite the longest surah. So Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran, you're reciting that, people are behind you fidgeting, I need to go to work, someone sitting on a chair, very elderly, I'm struggling. The people are being in discomfort because of the way, the length of your salah. This is character. This is caring and concern about the people praying behind you. This is character in salah. When you look at hadith, we're told, whoever performs hajj and he does not commit any obscenity or commit any evil will come back from sin as the day he was born. So he does the hajj, but it's not just about mina and muzdalifa and stone jump, it's much more about that. He doesn't have obscene behavior. He doesn't harm someone. This is the true hajj. So this is the reward. It's as if all of his sins are forgiven. The action is the hajj, but in the middle, is the character. He doesn't harm someone. He doesn't abuse someone. And you know when you see bad character, it sticks with you entire life. I did Hajj 25 years ago. 20, I remember. And of all the beautiful moments, uh, uh, one moment sticks in my mind. The moment we went to the hotel and the group was from England and the group in charge person was giving out coke and it was the last can of coke and two people from our group were nearly arguing and fighting over each other who is going to get the last can of coke. SubhanAllah. We're around the precincts of al Kaaba. We're doing the Hajj. Coke we can get uh, so abundant in this country and people are nearly arguing and fighting who is going to get the last can of coke. That incident of bad character, 25 years later, sticks in my mind. This is bad character. And equally, when you see beautiful character, it sticks in your mind. This is ikhlaq. This is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. You, want, you always talk about, yeah, I'm going to go to Hajj. I'll come back as if like all my sins are forgiven. But there are conditions to that. When it's hot and it's busy and you're struggling and challenges, how do you behave? 
In respect of zakat, the pillar of Islam, but it's not just about giving. Allah says in Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah and do not follow their gifts with reminders of their generosity or with injury, their reward is with their Lord. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. So what's the action? They give money, they pay their zakat. What's the reward? There's no grief for them, there's no fear for them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. In the middle, they don't remind people of their generosity. You know, remember I gave you 600 pounds. Or you're sitting in a group and you, push, you put someone down and you know he can't send them back to you because you've lent him money. This is humiliating him. Or you remind, make sure you help me now, make sure you give me a lift because I gave you money. It's as if your wealth, your, your sadaqah, your zakah has got preconditions attached. No, you don't put someone down because you gave them money. The, the, the early people would never, they would thank people if someone came to them so they could give it to them. They would see it as an opportunity to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see it perhaps as a way of putting others down. Because I've lent that person money now, I'm going to put him down in a group. I'm going to keep on reminding him. This is wrong. When you look at fasting in Ramadan and Hajj, we're told in hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, whoever does not give up false statements or acting upon them and ignorance, Allah is in no need that he leaves his food and drink. So Ramadan and fasting is not just about leaving your food and drink, but it's about leaving ignorance and leaving bad statements. So you're still lying, you're still cheating, you're still behaving badly. Where is the character of your fast? Where is the ikhlaq in your fast? We're told in a hadith when you're fasting and someone argues with you, say, don't argue with them. Say, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. We see more arguments in Ramadan than you see outside of Ramadan. Those that frequent the masjid, you know it. People, something, more arguments in Ramadan. This is supposed to be the best of our character. So we see and we pause and we think behind all of the pillars of Islam is our behavior, is our ikhlaq. So it's something so important we need to concentrate on. And it's something the Prophet ﷺ said, the person closest to me on Yawm Al-Qiyamah will be the person with the best character. The heaviest thing on Yawm Al-Qiyamah is good character. And another hadith he said, I guarantee a house on the outskirts of Jannah for the one who leaves arguments even if it's in the right. So you don't argue with people. You know, we argue with people even when they're wrong, just to prove a point. No, you're right, you're right. But I don't want to argue with you. And it's a small thing, trivial thing. I don't want that. I'll, I'll leave it. You will get a house on the outskirts of Jannah. He said a house in the middle of Jannah. The one who abandons lies even when he's joking. So you know, so many times you get a, a video and it's funny and you want to forward it on and you send it on, oh, but, but it's just a joke. You know it was wrong, but you say, no, you stop that. You don't lie, even if it's joking. No, no, I'm not going to lie. And he says, I, pr I promise a person, a house in the highest part of Jannah, the one he makes his character excellent, subhanAllah. The highest place in Jannah, gentle for those with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one whose ikhlaq is beautiful. So that person you see in your community, in your masjid, uh, the one whose ikhlaq is beautiful, that person is scoring something really, really high. And we close the first khutbah by reminding ourselves of the best of characters, of course, with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we look for the perfection. Quran describes him, Uswatun Hasana. He's got the beautiful, in the Quran is mentioned the character of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because when we think of good character, then we say, who's our role model? Who's our example? Do I follow people around me? They are very polite. They say please, they say thank you. These are all good things. But the model of good character is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and you want to know how good your character is, ask the person who lives with you. You know you come to the masjid, you're always smiling, you wear nice clothes and you, know, you say the nice things. Those people don't know your character. The people you live with in your house, your wife, your husband, your mother, your father, your ch ask them what your behavior, they will tell you what your character is like. You want to know, your, ask them, the people closest to you. And this happened. When you look at the character of Rasulullah Sallallahu you, you see what his family members said about him. There's a beautiful narration. Imagine this point. Prophethood has not started. The first revelation of Quran, Iqra comes down. The first revelation. So the Quran is still to be revealed. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he doesn't know what's going on. 
He goes to his wife Khadija radiallahu anha and he describes the situation. And he goes, I'm frightened, I'm frightened. She says to him, listen to her response. She, he says to her, I'm frightened, I'm frightened. She, she says to him, she says, Allah will never disgrace you. Then she continues, you keep good relationships with your relatives. You speak the truth. You help the poor and destitute. You entertain guests. You help all of those in calamity. SubhanAllah. Look at his character described. She said, Allah will never abandon you. Immediately she said, you help the poor, you help the weak, you help the needy. You look after your guests. You look after your relatives. SubhanAllah. Imagine any of you go back to your wife and we say, I've got a problem. Do you think she would say, no, no, you'll be fine. You are such a good person. Bum, 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 bum. Who will say that? This was the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa unheard of. And prophethood is about to begin. That's the amazing thing. Prophethood is about to begin. The only thing his wife can say, his wife can say about him is boom, 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 boom. You're impeccable. Allah will never disgrace you. Later on, another of his wives, Aisha radiallahu anha, is asked, how was his character? Direct question. How was his character? She didn't go boom, 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 boom. She said, his character is the Quran. Such a wise answer. To, to, to comprehend the perfection is the. He said, You want to see Rasulullah, you want to see perfection of Quran? Look at Muhammad. If you ever reach a position where a member of your family can say that about you, this is the level. This is the perfection of good character that we need to aspire for, inshallah.